Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Tonight's video presentation, I'm going to walk you through how to get PFSense onto your Proxmox server and how to install it, or at least do a basic install. So, with that, let's get started. So, we're here, and you can notice that I have no ISO. I actually deleted it after creating this VM here. I do still have my network bridges set up. I'm sorry about that, but I don't want to break this VM that I have running. So, with that, let's look at how I got PFSense onto this system. And then, we'll look at how to install it and how to get into the web interface. So, first things first, let's look at what happens if we try the direct download feature. So here's the PF install site or download site at pfsense.org slash download. I've selected the AMD 64-bit image, the ISO, and the mirror location. Now, if I right-click here and copy link as we would for most direct download setups and go back here, paste, and then copy the file name, and put it in here, just as we would do for almost every other direct download uh, download of an ISO image. And we press download, we get an error. The problem is, is this .gz compression that PFSense uses at the end. It makes extra work for us, and that's fine. It's a little annoying but it's fine, we can get around it. So the tutorial today will show you the commands needed to actually use the upload feature here to upload the file, or you can do it all on your Proxmox server as you choose. Now, if you choose to use the upload feature and do this on your Mac or Linux system, the tutorial will work. Unfortunately, I don't have directions for a Windows system today. But let's go ahead and we're going to select our laptop and we're going to open a shell. The laptop re refers to the name that I've given my server. This is just a Proxmox server, whether it's called PVE or whatever other name you gave it. And we're here working in the root directory, so I'm going to run ls and I'm going to show you there's no commands here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get that pfsense file. So we're going to use a command called wget and we're going to go here and we're going to copy that link just like we would have for the direct download URL. Then we're going to paste this in and this is going to download the file to the root directory. All right, so if we run ls now, we can see that we have the file, but it still ends in the .gz compression. First thing we want to do is actually check the hash of the file to make sure that we got the right file and it hasn't been messed with. So in order to do that, we're going to copy this file name, and we're going to type sh sha256 sum and we're going to paste in the file name now pfsense was great and they provided it for us right here so you can go ahead and check it I'm just going to check quickly and it looks like it's right all right so now let's use a tool called gun zip to actually remove the .gz compression. So for that, we're going to enter gun zip in the file. Now 
All right, so now the .gz is gone. We have a usable ISO file for our Proxmox system. But since we're on our Proxmox server, how do we get it over to a directory where the web interface allows us to use it? Well, we're going to do cp file name bar web vz template iso. All right. If we hit ls, we see our file still there. Let's check and see if it showed up here. And it did. All right, so let's do that cleanup. So to remove the file from our root directory, because we no longer need it, it has a copy in, in the ISO folder. I'm going to use rm and file name. There we go. So now when we run ls, it's no longer there. And our file's still here. All right. So now we can close our shell. We're done with that. Bye-bye. All right. So now create VM. Give it a name. Select our template under ISO or OS. System defaults will be fine. Disk will be fine. We're going to give it two cores, and we're going to use two gigs of RAM. The system's pretty light, and I don't want to give it much more. Network will be fine for now. We're going to have to do some more configuration here. Note that if you have a system with only one VLAN or one Ethernet port, you're going to need to use VLANs to create two separate Ethernet ports. This tutorial won't cover that. We're going to use two separate Ethernet ports. But what essentially you'll do is create two Ethernet devices inside your configuration on two separate VLANs. And then you're going to tag your incoming Ethernet into a managed switch and put that on a VLAN. That VLAN will pass through one VLAN and come in on a port. And then it's going to go out on another VLAN where it'll be distributed to the other ports. If you need a tutorial on that, or enough people request one, I may do one. All right, so we're going to press next here, and we're going to configure it. Now we don't want to boot initially because we actually need to go in and configure another network adapter. So to start that process, I've already done this, but let me show you what you need to do. We're going to go to our server, and we're going to go to network. Now, by default, you're going to have a bridge called VMBR0, and it's going to have all of this information filled in here. This bridge is tied to this network adapter in my scenario. In other scenarios, it might be tied to this one. This network adapter is faster, so that's why I chose to do this this way for this server. So with that, we're going to hit Create Linux Bridge. Now, in your scenario, this would be called VMBR1, and you don't need to fill this information out. All you need to do is choose your other Ethernet port. In my case, it's called ENO1. But this may differ depending on your system. So make sure that you check it here. Then you hit create and you're going to get a printout of what the file, config file looks like. As if you're happy with it, then you hit apply configurations. This active will turn from no to yes and all of this will begin working. So with that, then we go to our VM and we go to hardware and we're going to press add network device and we're going to select our second bridge and add it. This gives us two network adapters on the system. 
one for our WAN traffic, our incoming internet traffic, and the other for all of our LAN traffic, all the traffic behind the firewall. All right, so let's start this and open our console so we can begin our installation process. One. and read through the file, press escape, press enter to accept. Now we're gonna press enter because we wish to install. And we're gonna use the default keyboard map, so enter again. Now I'm gonna scroll down to the UFS BIOS. That's because in my experience, ZFS seems to eat a lot more RAM, even in single drive configurations. And the system that I plan on running PFSense on, and that we're installing it on right now, just doesn't have a lot of available RAM for me to give it to. So I want to go ahead and use the UFS BIOS for that. Press Enter. There are a lot of good security and redundancy features for the reliability of the device built into ZFS. And if you have the available RAM, I highly suggest you use it. We don't need to enter the shell, so no. And we want to reboot, so enter. We're not using VLANs, so N and enter. And the network adapter that we want to use for our WAN interface in my scenario is VTNet zero. So as you can see on our configuration page over here, we have net zero and net one. VTNet0 should refer to this adapter, and VTNet1 should refer to this adapter. So depending on how your cables and the speeds of your ports and how your bridges are set up on your system, you may have to choose different options than I am. Enter, and VTNet1, enter. Yes, enter. All right, so here I don't have a standard gateway. I have a, one of those all-in-one combination units that my ISP has forced me to use. You could see last week's video to hear a little bit more about some of the equipment I'm running here. Then PFSense has set up a default LAN with this IP address. So I've kind of patched things together in a weird way so I can show you the rest of this tutorial. But let's take note of this IP address and head to our web browser. And we're going to hit advanced and we're going to accept the risks. Username's admin and password is going to be PFSense. And hit enter. So we've logged in. This is where tonight's tutorial stops. I plan on bringing you more so I learn more about PFSense and begin using it on my own network. As always, have a good night and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help virtualize everything continue to grow.